I mean, let's just hope nothing of mine in my past comes out. I did it all on camera, though, so. What'd you do? Well, you know, just like sexually, verbally abused people. But he does here to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's but true. But like seven years ago, so it's a little more edgy. There was, you know how the whole Ellen thing has been, you know, where everyone's like, can we just get a host who's like nice to her uh, crew? Did and... you read her letter, though, that she yeah. wrote to everyone? Yes. Like there wasn't any accountability no, in that No, it letter. sounded like she, she it, was... it felt like she was blaming indirectly like her showrunner or somebody else Correct. like yeah yeah and, and there was no like i just want to say ellen all these rumors are about you you as yes. you are the one at the helm of this ship but yet you're blaming like the cook or like somebody else you know agree i think it's i think it was very strange you would think that you would just even just lie and be like oh yeah. shit i'm sorry if you felt that way right. i mean I, I, I was very confused when I read that letter because I was like, oh, are there other stories about other people being mean? Same. But it's just that they were not unhappy with how they were treated. Yes. Yeah, yeah, And And we had Steve Sharip on the show, and he told the story where he experienced her being a complete, well. I don't remember that. No, uh, he's, he's he said It's on episode 31. He just during the... remembers her being unpleasant and not cool. And then I've heard millions of stories uh greg fitzsimmons who was a writer on her show is like you know been very careful about what he said but it's very clear that she is not the coolest behind the scenes i was on her show once but you're celebrity no but I, one thing that caught me a little off guard was when it went to commercial break she didn't talk to me oh and I was like sitting there very awkward, like. Listen, I can't get on board bashing the LGBTQ community like this. So yeah, more like Helen, am I right? There, there, <laughs> there's like there, there's a part where everyone was like, well, yeah, Katy Perry came out and she was like, oh, she's been great. Jay Leno came out and like she's always nice to me. Yeah, you guys are like like big, fucking uber celebrities. Yeah, you know, big time people. We're not talking about how she treats other celebrities. However, I will say, I remember she did an HBO stand-up special very early on in Sopranos time. When Any time it was HBO, where there was like a fight or anything, they always gave us tickets. They were the coolest people to work for. Do you remember how high I got with your boyfriend at, to go to that Roy yes. Jones fight? Oh my God, I that terrible out of my high mind. school boyfriend of mine. I was fucked yes. up. Yes, I do remember that. Sorry. Uh, but I remember going to her special and then there was like a small gathering at like an Italian restaurant after and she was lovely but that was pre the Ellen show so maybe who knows I don't know maybe it was a very hard time but in see if you if you want to know what Ellen's like you can't ask someone like me or you you have to ask someone like Cassim absolutely you know? I am the I am the grunt and I am the one on the boots on the ground I'll tell you exactly <laughs> what it's like behind the scenes <laughs> oh wait this is Cassim's big episode I can't I can't yeah. I can't say that this yeah. is all of his people are going to be so today we're gonna be learning. Uh, Jamie, what are you looking at over there? What is what do you see in front of him? His pee pee. He drew a pee pee. No, but I mean, what does he? What did he bring with I him see, today? That he's... I see. He has notes. Oh. And he has questions. This is our most important episode we've ever done. Oh, Look, wow. I'm super excited because I really feel like I'm going to get the audience experience. I'm not a Same. host here. I am a full spectator <laughs> Me too. that will just have the opportunity to ask a question if I have one. But full I, spectator. I'm, Look, if you're, uh, this is a Casim heavy episode, so I apologize to most of you listening to this. This is gonna well, it's be- it's not about you. Well, this is a- Oh, it always is. Rob, Rob, <laughs> Rob has been encouraging me to not be so, um, embarrassed or restrictive about the types of things that I want to talk about on the show. I could hear him say that exactly. And Possum, I just, I'm really concerned about Dude, your... bring, bring a hood. Don't bring Edie <laughs> Falco on. Who do you want to talk to? What you're really looking at, guys, is Cassim wanted to know how he could do a dry run for his podcast for free. So let's, let's, let's... Coming oh. soon to Yeah, YouTube. please, okay. give me a break. Like, I have anything to fucking um, do with it. Look, so I wanted to share with you guys, and this is, this is very personal. Nice and handwriting. And, oh, thanks. And um, part of my interests are uh, UFO research, ufology, you know, Bigfoot, cryptids, paranormal, a lot of those things really just get me going. They, they get me torqued and I like to talk about them. Torqued. And I like to expose people that may not know a whole lot about them to it. And don't let Robert fool you. He actually knows a little bit more than he's letting you do? on. He's always, he knows I a didn't let bit. on anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. No, I, 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 yeah, I fuck with it a uh, little bit. So today, I watch all the Joe Rogans when he has like UFO guys okay. on. I watch fun UFO shit, but not the boring, like that, what's the one I didn't like? 
uh, 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 above, above Majestic. Above Majestic. Yeah, well, that, that, was that, too, gets, like, that gets weird. But I like all the boring stuff. Mm. You know, like I'll watch the lectures. You know, I'll, I'll listen to George Knapp lecture about uh, Skinwalker Ranch for two and a half hours. I mean, what? Exactly. So today's episode is essentially going to be about explaining a lot of these things that you'd normally go, what about? And yeah, those things that dry up your puss, we're going to de- dive all the way. This is a dry up puss episode. <laughs> yeah. And I apologize to anyone who's not into it. This is just one for Cass. We're doing this just this one for Cass. Got to throw him a bone. You know what? So then before we do that, yeah. We have lovely sponsors that are still willing yeah, let's to support get them in this before. Cassum episode. Well, they don't know that we're, this is what we're going to do, True. so hoodwink. Get them Apologies in before. Apologies in already advance, have their money. Braddock USA, but we are forever grateful to you and your affordable, reusable masks that we don't hate putting on. We wear every day. They are the most comfortable, breathable, and affordable face masks available, produced right here in the USA. It is premium upcycled t-shirt and jersey material that creates super soft and eco-friendly face covers that offer protection without being a nuisance to deal with. So when you go check out their website, braddockusa.com, you'll see they already have great prices, but for a limited time, they're offering an additional 20% off with promo code PJ Pants. Again, that's 20% off your entire order with promo code PJ Pants at B R A D D O C K U S A dot com, Braddock USA dot com with promo code PJ Pants. Yes, thank you, Braddock. I've had mine since we got them as a sponsor. It's been, I don't know, a couple months. Mm-hmm. Still use the same one. I wash it regularly. It's absolutely fantastic. The softest one I own. I'll tell you this when I'm, when I go for like, I have a drawer with like 10 masks in there. And when I go in and the Braddock ones are not, are in the wash, I'm pissed. Yeah. When yeah. I have no. to use the other ones. For sure. I, I've started having like carrying like, I have like masks in my car. Mm-hmm. I have masks in my bedroom, masks in the front, kids masks. It's like becoming a thing. Like, did you can't leave your house without your mask? Yeah. You know I, what's I don't never, mind the masks. You know what's never going to go out of style? Shaved balls. That's right. Jamie. <laughs> okay. You know who has no hair on their balls? I just balls. did them today. I actually just did them today before I came. And With I'm not, what? What'd you use, I used Cass? my Manscaped, my Woo! lawnmower 3.0, um, because the last time I had trimmed was about three weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I grow. I grow hair. And I'm also a grower and not a shower. And uh, so I'm all about growing. And when it gets too long and you need to add an, an extra inch or two, you got to trim them down. You got to keep it clean and you got to make it. Uh, if you're going to think of it like golf, you want a putting green and not the fairway. You there know, you go. You, you want Do you know it's clean. also waterproof and comes with an LED light so you can manscape in the shower or in the dark or if you're camping in a dark shower? That's how aliens stay hairless. That's- they might have sent this down just for us. They have the Shears 2.0 Nail Kit as well, which is the perfect add-on to their Lawn Mower 3.0 trimmer. Um, the Nail Kit allows you to pluck your eyebrows, trim your nails in style. On their website, you'll also find the Crop Preserver, which is an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. Cassim can attest to its uh, yep. efficiency. Mm-hmm. And this will help you tame that summer swamp ass with natural hydrators and antioxidants. So listeners of the show will get 20% off plus free shipping with the code PJPants20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code PJPants20. It's time to grab 2020 by the balls or by the horns. I feel like I take the reins without even really You're asking. amazing. You're is, so is this my thing good. now? Is this? Do you want me to just always You're do it? You're so good at it. You have a lot of things, and this is one of them. All right, I'll take yeah, that. Yeah, you bring so much to the pot. I just want to make sure that there's never, like, behind my back, uh, God, Jamie always hogs the ass. Like, oh, I wish I could do more commercials. <laughs> yeah. I wish I could sell out more. <laughs> um, hey, before we, we bring our guest on, I wanted to ask you guys officially kind of where you stand on the subject of ufos what your your beliefs are around We're talking about ufos today's the ufo uh day and and mm-hmm. um it's it's all about this kind of stuff and then we'll get back to sopranos stuff next week okay Nymphs and sopranos oh gosh HBO. Um, yes i'm a believer yep. i just don't know anything really what do you know? What's your baseline? Not wh- I saw that one documentary about Bob Lazar. You saw the Jeremy Corbell documentary. And I was documentary. stoned when yep. I watched it, so I don't. Only, I only remember maybe a quarter of it. And what'd you take away from? I it? remember there was a little man. There was a little I- alien man in the big, obs- you know, lockdown area okay. that he remembers seeing, sure. and that all the spacecraft were built for smaller beings. Yep. 
Um, he has nothing to win or lose by giving this information. Okay. Um, he's a very seemingly honest, Seems simple honest. man. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and for whatever reason, the government's trying to keep this information from us. Okay. Because why? Well, we'll get into that. Great. He's going to be able to answer that question? Well, you know, I have some theories. Um, our guest is a much more qualified uh, person. We'll have a lot of theories. Robert, before we bring him on, what, what's your sort of baseline understanding of, of all this? Uh, you believe it? I, I kind of look at it the way that I feel about, like, politics. Like, when somebody's all the way over here or all the way over here, I'm like, ugh. Like, mm. that, they make me uncomfortable. You know, like, if somebody's like, uh, th th we're alone you know, there's no right. way. I'm like, are you, are you insane? Like the the universe is so crazy. But then when someone's like, well, they in 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 uh, you know, when they 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 know like all the races and and they say it like it's fact yeah. things, right. and I'm like, oh, you sound a little fucking right. Crazy. It's hard to seem credible, right? And I'm I'm glad you brought this up because um, our guest is in the UFO world, mm -hmm. um, and if you want to ring him up, it'd probably be a good time. Um, <laughs> In the UFO world, you have people that are. Oh, it's so funny. Can I just have this? You one thousand percent. Can I just have this? I just think it's you. Just you. Just so naturally, you are you like being a boss? <laughs> like you like giving orders? <laughs> Don't women like that? I, you know what? Don't I, women it's like more, to take charge? I enjoy. I enjoyed you. Um, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring our guest on here one sec. Okay. Now, in the UFO community, there are the. Um, they are the uh, the kooks, right? The guys with the uh, crazy hair, and um, they say really crazy, outlandish things. I'm friends with a few of them. They're the ones that will talk about interdimensional beings. They'll talk about um, these things have been here for thousands of years. They've helped groom us. Part of our DNA is alien. Then you have uh, the people on the other side, like you were talking about, Robert, which are more um, fact, science-based, you know, evidence-based mm -hmm. people. And that's part of what I like with our guest, um, and I'll introduce him now. He is one of these guys. This is Alejandro Rojas. He runs a uh, podcast, which I really enjoy, and that's how I found him, called OpenMinds.tv. Um, and he is one of these credible people. He's a journalist. He talks about space and science. He works for, um, he's contributed to HuffPo and Den of Geek. But he is um, one of the reasonable, rational, rational, rational <laughs> people in the world. And I thought maybe we could bring him on. We could talk to him about all the questions we have as regular people. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know a little bit more than you guys, but you as a layman, yes. maybe you can ask him all the things. I mean, you can ask him about the Bob Lazar stuff. And maybe you can ask him you know, where he is in the spectrum of like kooky, crazy stuff. And then I have a whole <laughs> list of stuff to talk about. Um, Alejandro, thank you for joining us. You're our first ever Guess that's on Zoom while we're in studio and we've test we're testing all this new oh. equipment. So hopefully this. Can you hear me? Yes, we, we can. can hear you. There you are. You look great. Great. Thank you. So Thank much. you. How was that intro? Was that okay? That intro was wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time to be here. I know, uh, you know, coming on the Pajama Pants podcast was probably <laughs> not uh, on your list of things that you thought you'd be doing this week. But I, I really do um, sincerely thank you for being here. And I am a uh, true b believer and enthusiast when it comes to all this stuff. So no one's here. No one here is trying to prank you. OK, um, I, have, on. I, I have. Although I'm cool with that, too. No, yeah. no we are not. At it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jamie's loving it. She's Jamie's been. You know why? I have an yeah. offline conversation with Jamie after this is done. You know why Jamie's laughing? Because Kasim started this by telling us what questions we are allowed to ask. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Oh, you just really? said you were like you can ask uh, why <laughs> this is that. You can ask this, and okay, now no, I you will can be ask introducing whatever you want. You uh, can ask no, whatever you I'm want. So, I'm just I, very excited. I've been excited. I haven't yeah. been this excited for a guest in a in a really long time, yeah. possibly awesome. ever, and. Um, you know, this is really thrilling for me because I get to talk to somebody who knows a lot more about this subject, which is just rare. It's just so rare for me. And um, well, thank you. And yeah. I know you're just looking out for me when you're when you're coaching. You know, as far as questions, but I am really cool with any question at all. Yeah, thank you. No, I you have, I, I so many wild, script, crazy stick things. Stick to the script, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm somebody that fully believes. I've just never. Um, sought out much information so i'm so excited ah. to hear everything that you have to share with us 
great. Yeah, I thought a great launching point. I don't know if you guys have paid attention to the news the last uh, few months, but mm -hmm. in the last few years, the Pentagon has actually declassified official video. <laughs> right? There's, I don't know why you guys are laughing. <laughs> I'm just laughing I got, at Jamie. I, we've got to be able to get through this, okay? This is my this is my episode. I She's just crying. <laughs> She's actually crying. I was <laughs> laughing because you said you're like, I'm sure being on the pajama pants podcast <laughs> yeah. is not the thing. Like, that's you don't why gotta I was put, laughing. You don't got to put us down. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's uh, what Alejandro, I was have you about. ever watched The Sopranos? Are you kidding? I've watched every Sopranos. I'm huge fans. Okay. It's a it's a great Does thrill to be better? talking to you guys. Oh, so thank you. Yeah, definitely. It's my pleasure, no doubt. And you were not subscribed to Kasim G's YouTube channel <laughs> sure back in not. the day, right? It's the only way. You know, when I tried to get him, I was like, "Hey, uh, there's this podcast with two Soprano stars <laughs> um, and one guy who's interested in UFOs." Uh, look, so in the okay, news, so they've declassified. They de declassified these two, um, or maybe more videos, but they're they've been in the news. The New York Times reported on it. They've been it's made the rounds. Okay. And um, the actual fighter pilots who took these videos, and we'll show them here in a second, um, have been on record as saying, "Look, we I was following this thing. I don't know what it was. It performed uh, maneuvers and had characteristics of nothing like that we've ever we've seen. Ever nothing been. we have in our inventory." To my knowledge, uh, in the in the Navy or in the Army or anything, um, and so that sparked a lot of conversation as mm -hmm. of late, and I think it's brought in, and you can tell me um, if this is true, it's brought in a whole new kind of wave of people that are interested in the subject. Have you Definitely. noticed that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, nowadays we have politicians almost on a regular basis talking about UFOs. Um, you know, the other day Marco Rubio was out there defending their. Uh, you know, asking for these, they call them UAPs now, unidentified aerial phenomena, which is just a kind of a classier term for UFO. It mm. still means the same thing. But you have Marco Rubio out there and, and it's, you know, it's a by it's both parties talking about it. Mark Warner, who's also part of uh, the Senate Intelligence Committee, talking about this stuff and defending, you know, their interest in this field uh, in the public and in the media, which is rare. We, we haven't seen this for decades They've had a lot of great sightings all the way back to Blue Book, um, the first, you know, U.S. Air Force investigation into UFOs. So uh, that isn't as surprising as just kind of the uh, how seriously it's been taken. And that's mainly because this guy, Lou Elizondo, comes out and says, I've been running this program uh, investigating UFOs since 2007 out of the Pentagon, which is shocking to us because people like me, and this is where the gaslighting comes in. You know, we ask the government, we have government documents that show there are good cases and they're telling us, no, we have no interest. We've had no interest in 1969, despite us having the receipts to show differently. Um, but now, you know, they're admitting that it is certainly something they've taken seriously for quite some time. Are they doing this? So like you're saying, it's no new information necessarily or no new sightings. Are they doing this yeah. because of the t as a distraction during the current N climate of the state of the world? I get what you're saying, and I don't think so. Um, really, and I, I've got some more analysis out there and more is coming because it is pretty complicated. Uh, and I wouldn't say... I would say that we do have some more cases that have come out and some of these are credible, but just more of the witnesses are willing to talk mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. um, like the jet fighter pilots who, who chase these things. And we haven't had that in a while, but it's more of kind of a perfect storm in that the cast of characters involved with all of this are scientists for the most part, or people who are in intelligence who have been working on paranormal type projects in the government for decades. And uh, you may have heard of this guy, Robert Bigelow. Essentially, he had this organization where he hired a lot of these people to look into things decades ago. And so it's kind of and these groups were hired by the Pentagon to do this work on UFO investigation and also actually initially other paranormal type things. So it, it's just kind of gained momentum over the years. And it doesn't seem to be planned as far as we're doing this now to distract people. Mm -hmm. It's more of uh, these people have been able to gain more ground more recently than uh, I think no matter who the president was. I think if Hillary was the president, in fact, we might have gotten more information now because her campaign manager, John Podesta, 
was really into this topic. Mm. In fact, if I can plug one of my stories, yeah. uh, when Hillary was uh, w- campaigning, uh, she was going to go on uh, Jimmy Kimmel and they were going to ask her about UFOs. And through WikiLeaks, through John Podesta's emails that were discovered that were essentially stolen by the Russians and put out in Wik- WikiLeaks, he had they had asked, well, why are they going to ask Hillary about UFOs? And they said, well, here's why. It's because Podesta and Bill Clinton have had an interest in UFOs. And they sent their staff one of my articles about Bill Clinton and John Podesta's interest in UFOs, which goes way, way back. Um, And all of these kind of cast of characters have been in this background pushing for legitimacy in this arena. And now they're just getting it. Yeah, I think, um, you know, there's reason to think that our government is operating these things without the president's knowledge and and a lot some of that might have to do with like plausible deniability so the president can actually deny this stuff and mean it right um and also um you know as as a figurehead the president is really just sort of somebody who goes around and makes speeches and like the real in my head anyways the real government work all the black ops projects and a lot of this stuff is like handled by um people in defense a top top military yes. defense people. So they're, you know, Jimmy Kimmel has had this sort of tradition of bringing on anyone that's a candidate or, uh, you know, for presidency, and he asks them about UFOs. I think, uh, who was it that asked Donald Trump? It was the guy on Fox News. Um, Hannity? Lou Tucker. Dobbs asked Lou. recently, um, and then Donald Trump Jr. asked him, yeah, uh, like there was a week an interesting or two answer, also, I think, right? Where where Trump pulled the, well, there's some very interesting things, <laughs> very interesting things. Maybe we could talk about it. You know, one of the, one of those things, mm-hmm. almost like he's been briefed uh, about it, but I, you know, I really doubt it. Um, so, well, he was briefed recently. The Navy, essentially, here's kind of how the timeline went. This guy, Luis Elizondo. Well, Tom DeLong is a big part of it. The rock star. Yeah, with did Blink you know this? No. Tom DeLong of Blink 182 right. is now on the kind of forefront of this new movement um, that's put together this team um, uh, called To the Stars Academy. And that team includes this guy, Lou Elizondo, that used to work for the Pentagon and includes uh, advisors like Chris Mellon of Carnegie Mellon. Yeah. Who, who used wow. to work who used to work in defense. Uh, or uh, He's a big key to this. Yeah, yeah. So please go ahead. So essentially, right. Tom DeLong, uh, surprisingly, and we found out in the WikiLeaks also with John Podesta, was working with John Podesta and the military. His main point was you guys look bad. The kids don't like you. They think all these conspiracy theories. I want to help get information out and to make the military look better. And he got a lot had gained he gained a lot of headway in that. He had meetings with uh, upper level officials, people who run um, different projects in the military, including secret projects. And eventually, this all came to fruition in this organization that he started to the stars, like Sam was talking about. And that's where we heard about Lou Elizondo because they launched their project in October 2016. And one of the guys, one of the guys was Chris Mellon, like you're talking about, Mellon Carnegie. He was a deputy assistant secretary of defense for intelligent intelligence. He also formerly was a staff director for the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence. So a real insider type of guy and, you know, one of the, the kind of uh, bedrock, you know, big money guys. So obviously someone with a lot of resources. That was shocking. Other intelligence people, including this guy who says, I'm a career in, uh, you know, intelligence guy, and I used to run this program at the Pentagon investigating UFOs. Huge shocker because the government says they haven't been doing any right. UFO investigation. Soon after, the New York Times came out with an article, and that's when things really blew up. They showed some of their best cases, including this Nimitz event in 2004 where – these jet fighters chase this, these objects or this one object in particular. They got video on one occasion. And the, 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 the head pilot, the guy in charge, the wing commander, David Fravor, says, oh, I chased this 40-foot long, looked like a giant Tic Tac object. It saw me. It definitely maneuvered. It reacted to my maneuvers before it came off at extraordinary speed. And uh, so all of this kind of culminated in the, the Navy then backing their guys saying, 
we do take this seriously. We do believe these guys did see what they saw in that video that was in the New York Times and that To the Stars released of that incident. Is this the one where it's like 60,000 feet to one foot? Yeah. Well, that's the incident where they were seeing for several days these objects and and multiple objects. Like at one point, I think uh, Kevin uh, Day, who was the radar operator, he was the supervisor of the radar uh, room at the time, said there were dozens of these objects and they would. That was a characteristic that they saw happen often is that they would drop from 60,000 feet to the deck, which is essentially sea level in just a few seconds. Wow. And in fact, he was seeing these for several days until finally, during these training exercises, asked the captain, can I scramble these jets to go take a look at one of these objects we've been seeing for the last few days? He got permission, and that's when they encountered this 40-foot Tic Tac. How close so, did they get? This one here. Now, this is, that's the ocean. Uh, oh, shooting, shooting oh, like a, uh, uh, yeah. Are you box moving card here? No, I took an auto card. Oh, okay. Oh my gosh, dude. Wow. Look at it fly. It's just flying over the water? Yeah, it was uh, just flying over the water. And, and Alejandro, correct me if I'm wrong, was, was that the uh, craft that was seen coming in and out of water? Now, two things. First of all, that video was from uh, 2015 uh, off the East Coast, and that was a different. Uh, uh, oh, okay, I group thought that, that was. Saw that I might have mixed them up. I that thought was, that was the Tic Tac one that we were. Yeah, that was the Roosevelt. But still, it happened again. You know, there yeah. is another aircraft carrier doing training exercises this time off the East Coast uh, between Florida and like North Carolina, and they encountered that object there. Um, and while encountering quite a few objects during their training All right, exercises. Let me play. So again, it was similar. Let I, me love, pl- I love hearing their reactions. Those guys are yeah. so brave. They, I would yeah. freak out. Imagine the shit that they see <laughs> and then for them to be that excited I about know, something. I know, but they were also like, yeah. they were like excited. They weren't scared. Play, um, Bryce, yeah. play the unedited Na- Navy gimbal video. So this, this video is um, what they call the gimbal video. And because it was shot on this fighter jet's gimbal camera, I'm assuming. And uh, yeah, it has a camera with a gimbal, and you see some sort of movement in the gimbal. Some people argue that the rotation that you see is due to the camera, but uh, Fravor, uh, the jet fighter pilot, others, not that he was the one who recorded this, say no, that was the object actually mm-hmm. turning. All right, go but ahead. Uh, again, this was another one. So two of these videos, including this one, were from 2015. Uh, from the Roosevelt, uh, which was another big case. Um, so this is a gimbal video. Go ahead, Bryce. Dude, that is a fucking drone, bro. There's a whole fleet of them. Look on the ASA. My gosh. They're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. The whole thing, dude. That's not our LNS though, is it? It's not. It is an LNS, dude. Well, if there's like a thing, it's rotating. Um, that gets me so horny. I love stuff like this. It so that. <laughs> That specifically uh, might tie into the Bob Lazar um, documentary that you saw. And and please, uh, Alejandro, just step in and tell me if I'm regurgitating bullshit here. But Bob Lazar, when he was explaining how these UFOs kind of fly, it's kind of like belly forward right. um, because of the gravity field that it's creating. Um, and that's kind of what we see in that gimbal video, right, Alejandro? Potentially, the shape is really hard to make out because these videos are flare videos, so they're infrared. So they are recording the heat differences, heat signatures. Um, But even with heat signatures, of course, the air is much cooler than the surrounding area. So uh, like a jet fighter, you can usually make out its shape with these sort of cameras because the jet is warmer than the air that's around it. But in these cases, yeah, you just kind of see this blob. So it's Definitely hard to say whether or not a shape is representative in these uh, videos 
or not. Um, they're just re really mysterious. There's, it's really hard to make much out of the videos themselves. The witness testimony and the corroborating radar data is really what makes these really uh, credible. Yeah, I, I, I think, and, and that's what I like about you is you're, you're very rational, you know, no jumping to conclusions um, like I did with the Bob Lazar connection. But I do have. <laughs> I'm to, skeptical of this. I, 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 I love. I love that you are, I and I want to get into it. I do want to ask, what is your best guess at what these things are? You know, some people will say, "Well, it's possible the uh, the Chinese have developed something and have made a giant leap in technology that we don't know about." Uh, I guess it could be possible. It's extraterrestrial. I always tend to to think that in um, China recovered some sort of craft reverse engineered it, and now they are like playing in a whole different game than we are. And they're, because of these things are being seen over military um, installations and because they these things are uh, taking part in, in, in these sort of exercises that our jets are, are doing, it seems like they want to know what our situation is, what our uh, military capabilities are, what our plans are. What are your thoughts? What's your best guess? It's really hard to say, uh, and I think there's a lot of great theories out there. One thing that we're getting now, which we didn't have uh, as much before, is information from like Chris Mellon on, and on how much did you scrub? How certain are you that these are not Chinese or Russian or are black projects? So it's really difficult to say. The technology is so beyond what we have right now in the terms of how quickly that they maneuver the uh, able the the quickness they turn for instance you know there was a group called the scientific coalition for uap research you can go see their, their analysis of uh, objects on their website and they're estimating you know g-forces in the 20 to 30 g area a jet fighter pilot or a jet fighter will fall apart at those levels, even half of that, a jet fighter will just begin to disintegrate. It cannot handle that sort of. So just to, to show you how advanced these things are, um, you know, other theories are, of course, aliens, that it could be creatures from from space, uh, like our my good buddy Giorgio with the wild hair, like you referred to my earlier. Buddy too. Uh, you know, always, it's always aliens. But uh, other people, I think, have some, there's a scientist who argues that it could be people from the future. There are a lot of military witnesses who are, are credible, who have had some kind of up-close experiences with objects, and they're convinced that it was something from the future. Um, what does that and mean? Then yeah, yeah, that's what I want. There's a possibility. Is, is, what, what, what's that? what convinces them that it's something from the future? I think because it's it's identifiable as technology. So, for instance, one of these guys is named Jim Penniston. He was involved with this uh, event that occurred in 1980, where there was a few days where there were UFO sighting at the Rendlesham Forest, which is there's a couple bases there that the United States had uh, rented out, and secretly we had nuclear weapons there. Um, and there were these objects seen. The deputy assistant base commander, Colonel Holt, saw one of these objects, which was a bright light, beam, a beam of light into the weapon storage area before floating over by him and his men and then beaming a beam of light down at their feet. Um, and they, they witnessed a lot of activity that night. But the, a couple of nights prior to that, one of the a few security guards went to go look light out in the forest. Jim Penniston got the closest and he walked up to this object. He said it was about six or seven feet long. It was triangular in shape. It kind of had this pyramid type of uh, structure on the top of it. He walked around it, taking notes. Uh, it had these weird kind of hieroglyphs on it before it just slowly went up above the tree level and took off at a very fast speed. He's convinced that what he saw was something from the future. He just feels that you know, it was it looked man made that it looked like some sort of technology we don't have now, but we could in the future. And to be honest, you know, uh, I mean, that's just as plausible as any other idea. Right. Uh, interestingly, a lot of science also like the idea because there's so much science around the possibility of multiple dimensions, string theory, M theory, all of these sort of things that perhaps they are some other dimensions, that it's a multi-dimensional rather than extraterrestrial or 
or there's a lot of possibilities out there. And a lot of the scientists, the hardcore kind of old scientists like Alan J. Hynek, who or J. Allen Hynek, who we saw on the television show Project Blue Book, who was a real guy. You know, he's very careful to not jump to assumptions. He's like, we, we just don't have enough data. And often in science, the answers turn out to be things we never would have expected or even could have imagined. Um, Do you think so we it's ever, difficult to say for sure. We ever will know? I don't know. A lot of times, you know, I used to be more agnostic. I used to think, you know, we probably won't figure it out. But who knows? We're finding more and more. And the thing is, with the government taking this more seriously, hopefully more resources will put be put towards really doing investigations because it's been mostly civilian organizations, mm -hmm. at least publicly, that have been doing the research with very, very limited resources and very limited ability to capture real data other than observation. So um, it's not like we're getting mostly, closer to them than before, necessarily. What's that? It's not like we're getting closer to them from before. Right. They're oh, always kind of elusive. Exactly. Right. No, they, they outclass, you know, our, our propeller planes back in World War II. Right. They outclass our, our best jets right now. Um, yeah, we're not even, our technology advancements are, are minuscule compared to the type of technologies that are being observed. Uh, um, um, so, yeah, a lot of people scratch their heads are, and are boggled, and other, including other governments. And uh, quite possibly, and I think it's realistic, and it, it seems like this with all the military witnesses I've talked to, and even what we're getting now that we have kind of more uh, insight and interaction with people in intelligence that everybody's baffled, everybody's boggled. One of my favorite books on, on the subject is by Philip J. Corso, that it's The Day After Roswell. How much, and, and to explain what's in this book, essentially um, a colonel who was tasked in the 60s, he was given a file, uh, uh, a sort of everything that we knew about Roswell. And in Roswell, essentially, there was a, a early morning crash just outside of Roswell that happened, and essentially one of the most famous cover-ups in UFO history. We were even, you know, there was even a newspaper article that shows, you know, flying disc. Oh, actually, it's just a weather balloon. That whole story, right? right. So, Kurt, uh, Philip J. Corso essentially said he got the file in the '60s um, and was tasked with taking all the retrieved technology all the stuff that they collected and and sparsing it out to big u.s companies to try and reverse engineer and that's how we got things like night vision um in integrated circuitry uh, uh fiber optics. kevlar fiber optics all that stuff how accurate is what i you know what i would seem to be a, a very great a fun read you know how accurate is what he said because a lot of it does tie into what you're saying about us um, retrieving crafts and not being able to reverse engineer or trying to. Um, and is is that something that you, as a, as a pretty down to earth researcher, is that something that you buy into? And, and um, do you believe something happened in, at Roswell? I don't know. You know, I've, I've been posting a lot of articles about the credible or at least what we know about different UFO crashes in the United States and internationally at Open Minds TV. So people can read those. Some of them are compelling, some not so much. Um, when it comes to Corso, we also have it. We were able to get his personal notes and post those which was kind of difficult. And they're really weird. He talks about meeting an alien. He talks about some really weird stuff, which is probably why the publishers didn't want those documents out to begin with. However, you know, what he's saying is very compelling and he's very credible. But then again, it kind of lends to uh, some of the difficulty when it comes to all of this. So for instance, Tom DeLong, let's say his guys actually got a piece of material that was really advanced. What would you do with it? If you were a company, likely you would uh, patent the technologies that you're able to discover, but you wouldn't want people to know where it came from. Of course. You know, you would want to claim that as your own and it would be then secret. You would not divulge mm -hmm. where that ever came from. Mm -hmm. And it might be the wise thing to do because what else would you do? Give it to the government? You don't know what they're going to do. What if they do the same thing? They just hide it. They build technologies off of it. And then you're responsible. These yeah. weapons being built. Why not do 
your own company and keep it yourself. So it offers a lot of really weird uh, scenarios that might have happened. So he's credible. It might have happened later on in his life. He said his story was a compilation of different things he and his friends knew or were a part of. So he might not have been directly involved with those things, but uh, talked to people who were. So that's a really difficult case. It's plausible. But uh, again, who knows? When it comes to Roswell itself, um, again, it's difficult. Uh, I think, you know, the Air Force itself admitted it was a cover up in their report. And that's kind of what I like to push. So there's evidence and the main people who were there agree that the photos that were taken that we see in the newspapers when they came out and said, oh, it was just a weather balloon. That was a weather balloon in those pictures. But that's not what they found out in the um, in the you know, in the desert. Uh, they say it was covered covering up this project mogul which was this other project that where they were sending listening devices up with balloons and listening for essentially uh, vibrations in the air so they can tell when another country was testing nukes uh, which was going on at that time however the scientists involved with that were like well there's no reason for him to have covered that up Really, we used regular weather balloon material. So, and, and that it's not like it was this big top secret thing. So, Roswell's a tough one. Other, we have anecdotal information that uh, people say they saw stuff. Um, who knows? It's really that one's an outstanding question. It's a tough one. I, um, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, what did he say his experience with the aliens was like? Oh, uh, he said that he was in. New Mexico, I think this was at White Sands, um, which is where, you know, the Trinity bomb and White Sands is really interesting. Holloman Air Force Base is there. Uh, lots of top secret, you know, lasers being tested, stuff like that out there. Well, he said there was this cave. He thought he saw an object. He was flying from somewhere to somewhere else. He told his guy, hey, land down there. I want to see what that is. They go down there and there's some sort of craft in this, this creature. And... Um, it told him something, oh, it said essentially they were indifferent to us. They weren't good or bad because he asked. And he asked, well, what are you here for? And they said something like the uh, dawning of a new age if you want it. Oh, um, hell yeah. But that was about it. It wasn't a whole lot. I like of how we got the option um, if you want it. I, I think in the book. He refers to because he he talks about um, secondhand the the bodies that were found at the so-called crash site, and apparently there were two that were alive. They shot one, oh. um, and essentially the autopsy on them found that their bodies were were made for this is according mm -hmm. to him for um, space flight. Their, their bones were like kind of flexible, but super strong. Um, they, they, there was some sort of layer of uh, skin that allowed them to maybe absorb nutrients so they don't have to eat or poop or do things like that. He, he sounded like he thought, and he was convinced that they were cloned uh, biological beings that were made by either another race or something else just for reconnaissance and space flight. This is kind of where he starts to get a little kooky in the book, but yeah, at some point you just have to either like start accepting all these theories or, you know, it's it's hard to kind of sparse them out. Mm. Um, but it is it is interesting. And I, and I do want to ask you a, a couple things. And one of them we talked about earlier about the Bob Lazar, because mm -hmm. Bob Lazar has been everywhere. He, he was on Joe Rogan. Is there... Somebody like me who sees him as a very credible, honest guy. I like to be able to tell when somebody, I think, be able to tell when somebody's lying to me or not. Um, but what sort of things, and I know Stanton Friedman was was not a, a, a big on, on Bob Lazar. What sort of things should I know that would make me skeptical and, and maybe not believe his story so much? Well, I mean, I don't like to, like, make people skeptical. No, no, I, I like people to judge on their own. Yeah, give me the facts but and I'll, I'll tell make you the decision. Yeah, why I feel that way. Some of my concerns are just that there's not, I don't think I know one scientist on board with what he's talking about. Um, especially in journalism, you, you got to defer the people with expertise. Um, I'm not a scientist. I know some things, but, you know, uh, 
no, most scientists say what he's talking about is completely made up. It's, it's mumbo jumbo and it doesn't make sense. Um, and there are, there have been some changes in what he said over the years on that end. The other is that he's one guy making these claims and no one else has come out to verify anything that he's ever said over all of these years. Mm -hmm. We've never been able to get any corroboration with that. Uh, we do know with his education, and this was Stanton Friedman, who is a physicist to famous ufologist. Uh, he, uh, his main contention was not just the science, but that his education is fabricated. And I think that the evidence is pretty strong that he doesn't have the degrees that he, he said. Mm. Um, obviously, Bob Lazar is very intelligent, maybe even genius level. I would argue that he's definitely, you know, along those lines because he is a self-taught scientist. He creates rocket cars and, you know, all of these really cool things. He's obviously very knowledgeable when it comes to science. But um, those are a lot of the red flags. And there's a video that just put out was, which highlights all of the changes in his stories over the years. So, so a lot of it is based, one of this, so yeah. a lot of it's based on you can't trace. There's no um, paper trail as far as his education is concerned, and no one's backed him up. Yeah, and um, and, and you just also think that um, essentially because of the fact that there are there's no apparent location of what he said well, he worked at. Those are all, and on top of that, we know a lot of people that have worked at Area 51. There are dozens and dozens of scientists and engineers, um, bureaucrats who have been to, including Chris Mellon, been to and worked at Area 51. And not one of them either can corroborate any of these stories. So um, it's not like we don't have people who worked at Area 51 we can talk, couldn't, you know. Yeah. You can, yeah. and none of them have, you know, corroborated any of this. Yeah, I, he's a very controversial figure, and and I've heard both sides, you know, and it and it, it seems to me that it's, to, it wouldn't be impossible for the government to, if they really wanted to, erase your file. Of course, on the thing. I I don't put that past our government now. Whether or not they they would, that's a different question. He, he, See, I would argue that. I don't know that that's true. I don't know that anybody could erase all of my educational background. They might be able to take it off of computer networks, but, you know, I have no doubt I'd be able to find many people who, um, you know, especially university professors. They're not like university professors are not government stooges. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, I, most university professors I know of are very independent yeah. and stubborn. And, you know, I think um, I think you can intimidate anyone to do anything you want, just like I'm intimidating you right now. OK, to, Bob to Lazar's real. Me. <laughs> yeah. So we got to pull out the big gun yeah. there. So t what is it, Tom DeLong? Right. That's his yeah, name. Tom so DeLong. Tom DeLong was able to get his voice out there more because he's famous. So have you ever thought about telling people that you're Oscar from the office so that you could get <laughs> your voice out there and heard more? Yeah, I loved your work. On Which one show. was Oscar? The, the one, one that looked exactly looks like, like you. <laughs> oh, yeah, I loved Oscar. That's a good idea. You should do that. You know what? Maybe I should try it. And especially if I get your backing, if you guys will, like, yeah. vouch for me. 100%. Because you're insiders. Three celebrities, you're right? Entertainment All three celebrities here. Insiders. Um, I, <laughs> right. I, think it's, I think it's great. I think it's so funny that Tom DeLong, the guy from Blink-182, is, like, now spearheading what seems to be the most yeah. promising um, work uh, being done in ufology. So cool. And there's a great show called Unidentified that's on the History Channel that is a very like straightforward, well-produced, um, there's no hokey stuff in it. It's all interviews with people that have had um, sightings or encounters and people of weight that are like military or government officials, um, even in, in other countries' governments, which I think you just did an interview with uh, somebody I saw from the last that was a colleague of mine but we did post uh at open mind tv okay. an interview with colonel sanchez who was yes. on the last episode of unidentified who was uh part of the uruguayan air force and uh they were one of the first official government ufo investigation organizations and they still exist and were influential in getting that other organization starting in south america um but what was revealed in unidentified is he claims that 
it was the U.S. government that prompted them to create this official UFO uh, organization. Yeah, I really love the way you um, are approaching all of this information and are respecting all of this information, everything that everyone's giving. But if I had to ask you, with all the possibilities of what it could be, like deep in your gut, what do you feel? You know what? Uh, I guess it's it's cynical, but it's also, I guess, because you ingrain it in yourself, especially doing journalism, right. not to uh, bias yourself, that I can't say for sure. I really, really cannot say for sure. I really feel that, you know, these things being from the future are just as credible as them being from, you know, an, an ET civilization. That would be my favorite one probably because I'm a total sci-fi geek okay. and I, and I love that kind of stuff. I guess my main intention getting involved with all of this stuff, when I first went to college, I was went in for rocket science. I wanted to work for NASA or something, but then uh, I found journalism more fun, but uh, I've always wanted to fly you know, like in Star Trek or something, fly and yeah. go see the stars and, and go see other planets. So that's been, and I figured NASA's going to take too long. So I need to hitch up a ride with one of these, these UFOs. Yeah. So, but I, I mean, I really don't know. It's really difficult to say. I just, I do though. I am confident, more confident now than ever that I think we'll get more and more answers as time goes on. Is that because and of it could disclosure? Be really interesting. Do you think that disclosure is happening on purpose um, through the government, or is that what looks like disclosure, which is the the government making giving us all this inf information, acknowledging this stuff, or is is that also part of a tactic of of more of a cover up to give us a little bit, but to also like maybe misdirect us from other things? What, what's happening? Maybe, but I, I don't see it that way just because I, I'm really in the weeds on this. I see all the major players and what they've done over the years. I see it more like this, that there always have been, even with Project Blue Book. So, for instance, the very first UFO investigation by the United States government was called Project Sign. And that's what started in 1947. It only lasted a year. Uh, the document that resulted from that, which was called the Estimate of the Situation, the Air Force has decided some of these things could be extraterrestrial. We don't know. Some of these are real technology beyond our own, and we don't know what it is. Um, the uh, a general, General Vandenberg, got a hold of this, and he said, rip, rip, this is ridiculous, try again. And he was frustrated because he said, you have no evidence that there's anything coming here from another planet. And so he said, try again. And there's always been a large contingency in the military of people having sightings or taking this seriously. So behind the scenes, there's kind of been this battle of people who take it seriously, people who just don't want anything to do with it and want it to go away. And right now, uh, the guys who are interested are have finally made their move and they're highly successful in it. And now they're getting this taken seriously and getting more information out to the public. I think what will result is the public taking it more seriously, perhaps another government program, or at least, you know, uh, updates on what, what's the UFO situation. That sounds small, but really it's pretty uh, ground shifting in, in the perspective and the, the zeitgeist that, you know, now UFOs are an okay thing. So I, I think that's significant. Um, look, there's so, there's so much I would love to talk to you. Maybe we could have you back on. Hold on. I, I want to, I want to ask something about you, which is I have a quick three parter. Okay. So how, how many hours a night do you sleep? How many hours a night? Yeah. It varies. Uh, I'm one of these guys that has to get sleep. So I attempt to get seven to eight, usually get about five to six. So what Woof. percentage of your day is spent thinking about? or researching aliens and UFOs? Um, much more than it should be because it's not as lucrative as other things I should be doing. But uh, do you have a wife? Lately, I would say eight hours a day, six hours a day, okay, and, a lot and the, of time. The, what I'm leading to is, does this stuff ever creep into your dreams? Mm. Rarely, interestingly enough, and I think it is because I do look at it more kind of technical um, just and analytical. Uh, I would say back in the past when I really down. kind of digested the idea that aliens could be visiting us, I was kind of scared for a little while and I had 
to be honest, when I really kind of thought, whoa, this is a real possibility, I couldn't sleep for a couple of days. If somebody's listening to this and they are interested, but they don't really, <laughs> what's a good starting point for somebody to um, get in, maybe do a little bit of their own research? I'm not talking about joining MUFON and like paying for the jacket and the shirt, especially with what's happening with that organization at the moment. But what <laughs> what can what can civilians Jamie's do? Jamie's like who? Oh, yeah, I'll join. What is it? Um, <laughs> yeah. Jamie's well, got time for that. Yeah. Well, we can get into that. A lot of underage stuff going on. A little sexual stuff. Um, but what can what can the regular person do who's interested? What can they start? You know, what yeah. book can they start with? What, what websites besides, you know, yours, obviously, openminds.tv, where, what can they do? Yeah, I think uh, the great thing about our site, it's very digestible in that we tackle it as a, from regular journalistic kind of perspective, uh, giving you the facts as opposed to trying to push opinion. Sometimes I do. Like uh, my piece about what you're talking about with MUFON, I shared a a lot of opinion and disappointment with uh, some of their leadership. So, yeah. but uh, you know, the, one of the people that's been writing these New York Times articles for uh, about UFOs and breaking this news is a uh, Leslie Kane. Um, so read her stuff on the New York Times. She's also got an amazing book, but UFOs generals and other important people go on the record type of thing. Um, it's a really great book. Uh, also, that Rupelt book that I mentioned that was written by the guy who ran Project Blue Book, must read. Really important. An estimate of a There's situation. Also an, yep, estimate of the situation. There's also a guy um, called Colonel John Alexander, and he's one of the guys that has been working on paranormal projects in the government for decades. And uh, he was in Army Intelligence, and then he became a defense contractor and a uh, consultant. Um, but Colonel John Alexander has a book called UFOs, Myths Versus Reality. That is a really, really good book. I think that's an important one. Um, so some of those and then following. And Sopranos. Now, Tom, this is what's weird about To the Stars. Tom DeLonge believes some really weird stuff. Yes. And the rest of the group does not necessarily agree with him. So um, if you go to To the Stars, you won't see a lot of Tom stuff. But personally, I think it'd be wise to follow like Chris Mellon and Louise Elizondo. Watch that show Unidentified because, yeah. I mean, that show is. I mean, how weird is it that this show, the result of this show on UFOs is that the Senate Intelligence Committee is now asking, you know, the military for these reports on UFOs. I mean, yeah. the effect of that show and the uniqueness of that show is is yeah, it's very fun that for we a haven't guy really like seen me. before. Yeah, who's who's uh, you know, there's a lot of content out there, but there's not a lot of new content. And um, you know, it's it's cool that the guys that are making the show are also the ones that are pushing um, a, a lot of this stuff forward and and making the news as well as reporting on it. Um, Alejandro, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Uh, we, you know, de thank you guys. Depending on how how people respond to this, I'd love to have you back. Yeah. And uh, you guys, please check out Alejandro um, in his website, OpenMinds.tv. There's a podcast. He has a YouTube channel, um, the Rojas Report. I mean, you name it. Uh, and it's not just aliens. It's it's just science and space, and you and you write and you cover a lot of it, right? Right. And we do cover, you know, the more controversial cases. If something new comes out about Bob Lazar, I'm good friends with the guy who made the documentary, Jeremy Corbell. So he'll let me know and uh, I'll write about it. So, yeah, we keep up to speed on on all of that. Really cool. Well, thanks so much for coming on. This is real thank thrill you. for me. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Have a good one. Wow. How about it? Huh? So cool. So interesting. You know what I was Do realizing? you guys believe a word of that shit? I do. You know what it was interesting? I was as I was watching it, I was thinking, I think I would be more freaked out about those crafts being from the future than an alien. Yeah. That scares me. You know, he way mentioned more. that a couple times and it's it's like, you know, I've, like I've, the I've, inner dimension the multi dimensional yeah. like that freaks me the fuck out. Like the OA like See, cause that would kind of make me feel like th they they are, you're safe we're safe yeah like they're okay. they always kind of make sure that we're like because there were stories i wanted to ask him but Casim wouldn't shut the fuck sorry, up sorry yeah, yeah. Uh, no, 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 we, no, I'm kidding. we ran out of time I, uh i but, had a lot of stuff to ask no, yeah, him too. there were a lot of stories about ufos showing up and like shutting down missile silos right like yes. that's a big thing yeah yeah so it's like on they, numerous occasions I, right i was also wondering but i didn't want to ask, see if it was a stupid question but like the fact that our cameras can pick it up 
Oh, I yeah. Mean, the, I would think they're if any, if that's what they are, they're slowing down on purpose to let themselves be seen totally. because otherwise they'd be moving that we couldn't even capture yeah. them. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people think that they slow down on purpose so we they're and teasing and they, us. And yeah, the, like the over the White House uh, he he talked about there was a, an incident where a bunch of UFOs were over the White House um and people thought that they were doing it to test how fast we could respond and like scramble jets and like do it. and as soon as our jets get close enough they just boom zip away yeah um you know there's a lot i wanted to ask them tr3b's those black triangles that people see um a lot of the mm. uh abduction stuff but look it's good that's to have that's my favorite one of my favorite skits on SNL which the ones? abduction ones where they have like three people that they're oh yeah 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 <laughs> yeah and always Kate McKinnon is Kate the one McKinnon. that got like sexually assaulted yeah. by an alien yeah she's always had the cigarette hanging yeah. out of her mouth uh terrific sketch on SNL um you got you got something there no 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 I was just and, seeing for next week whatever what, what we had going on uh, <laughs> none of our listeners want to get through this none of our listeners are still listening anyway uh, these are all well look we I'm glad you guys let me have one yeah you no, can have as many I as you want it was so babe. interesting to me I I and I I I definitely want to know more I I mean yeah. I think it's just I think it's exciting um I don't know if it's something we're going to know in our lifetime, though. Can I but maybe we're part. living in 400 lifetimes right now, and who it knows? won't matter. Can I say, I think it would be more fun to have someone on who didn't have his shit together like this guy. You know what I mean? Like, I would like someone like who you're kooky? like, this guy's a fucking kook. Yeah, I think that'd want, be fun. You want wacky. I mean, we can do a wacky can one. Can we get Bob Lazar? He's not, he's not wacky. We would need, yeah, like... Yeah, no, Bob Lazar already said he would. We need to my say. buddy Giorgio from Ancient Aliens, who's got great. the hair. Great. Giorgio's great, uh, yeah. I'll get Action Bronson to and fucking... And he's just one of the sweetest guys. need him on. Colin, yeah. Um, yeah, that'd be a good collab. Does he like Aliens? Love Well, he has aliens. a show on Vice that... Oh, duh! ...where they rewatch yeah. Ancient Aliens episodes. That's right. Yeah. Uh, great. I God, mean, that, he's such a renaissance man. He really is. And now he's fucking skinny, too. I know. Watch out, Cutter. <laughs> Watch out, Cutter. What are you saying? Uh, look, gave me a better birthday present than he did. I want to plug a, a podcast I'm on um, before we go, just because uh, what? that's what, that's what I get to do. Uh, no Charisma podcast. I was a guest on that. Please oh. check them out, and um, you can follow us. Where my on, mom's at? I was on. You were on Where My Mom's At with Christina P. Mm -hmm. Very oh, very funny. So much fun. I learned that Doctor Drew gets two to four BJ's a week. He is. Uh, what it's the well fuck? known that Doctor Drew is cannot be satiated sexually that's, he is an animal we talked about that well last known. week we talked about it last week but remember we discussed what is a blowjob and what is not that's right yeah to completion rob you're on i'm on three podcasts yeah. but i don't know when they're coming out I, none of them have come out yet so when they come out we'll talk Rob's about a hot it. ticket well by the time this is out well we don't know oh, okay. so i'll say it uh then well, guys, thank you. We've we just passed seventeen or eighteen thousand subscribers on YouTube. <laughs> that's, 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 that's this is incredible. gonna shoot us up to like eighteen thousand twenty. Well, yeah, Alejandro, you, you got your your viewer. I mean, yeah, this is gonna be our biggest episode. Yeah, maybe he can transfer a few over our way. Um, uh, hopefully, you guys didn't hate this episode. I had a blast. Uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the um, notification bell. And I'm not ignoring you. I'm well aware about Big Brother beginning, and next week we have a very special guest who will talk a lot about that with us. Watch Big Brother because it's Jamie's passion and if you want to support oh, Jamie. I have an idea about a guest. Wow. Nice. Later. We'll have to talk about Julie it. Julie Chen Moonves. Yeah. Watch Julie out. Chen Moonves. Stick to my man. Um, thank you guys so much. We'll see you on the next Can't one. Wait, Kasim, how do you feel about somebody who's extending their last name when you've tried your whole life to just cut yours down to one letter? I tried, <laughs> I tried man. I did. You know, it's so funny. Uh, maybe next podcast. I went to Jordan and, you know, I met my the extended family and stuff, all Garibas. And the one note I kept getting was like, well, yeah, why don't you use your full last name? They're all so sad. And I felt Aww. terrible. Shame. I'm just trying to make it easy for SEO, for search results. Okay. That's enough for me. Bye. All right.